Hi, this is Craig Daniels. Welcome to Craig's Classroom. Today's subject is Google Maps, and I was going to take you through some of the things uh, through one of my favorite applications of Google is the Maps application. And I know you've probably been lots of time in Google Maps looking up different things, but I wanted to show you today how you can use Google Maps to customize maps that you can use within your websites and your blog pages. And by doing some customizations, you can embed them. So let's, let me take you on an idea a tour of some of the things I had in mind here. For instance, if you wanted to put a boundary around something, maybe it's a school district or a community area. Uh, in fact, today's lesson, I'm going to take a golf course. I'll show you how to put a boundary around something, and then you can embed that into your web page. So for instance, here's the case that I'm going to show you how to do something like this. You can draw the boundary and then embed it. Another thing that you can do uh, in Google Maps, hopefully uh, you're going to learn that uh, throughout the lesson, some of the different things about that, how you can use that today, and that's place marks. You can put place marks on maps. So, uh, for instance, if you wanted to highlight certain points within or near your community, for instance, if I was highlighting movie theater locations, here's a couple of examples. This is, I'm using Staten Island as my example because that's where I live. So these are some movie theaters, but I created a custom map with place marks. I'm going to show you how to do that. <clears throat> and then finally, I'm going to take you into how do you embed these into your blog posts. So I'm going to create a sample a post, uh, show you how you take an embed code and put it into your blog. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started and uh, get into our demonstration. So I'm going to switch over to my browser window and I'm on the Google Maps page. You can see that in the upper right hand corner, um, if I highlight this point up here, I'm logged in as myself. Now in order to save anything within the Google world, you're going to have to have a Google ID. It's free, it's easy to get. If I'm logged out here, if I'm signed out on any of the Google pages, it could be the main Google search page, it could be the Google Maps page like you see here, there's a sign in button. Right, very easy. If you hadn't already created a Google account, you just say down here at the uh, below the sign-in area, I want to create an account, and it's a very simple process. Just put in your email address, choose a password, some basic information about you. Very simple, one-page entry into the Google world. And there's there's a ton of things that you can do within Google, and the Maps is just one thing. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as as myself here. So you want to make sure that if you don't have a Google free account, that you do that. Now I'm going to, I'm signed in now to the Google world. I'm going to go back to maps.google.com. <clears throat> and once you're signed into Google Maps, you're going to see it on the title bar just below the logo here, it says My Maps. And this is, these are maps, these are customized maps that you've saved throughout the time that you've worked in Google Maps. You see I've, I've done quite a few different customized maps here. Now let's take the case of, let's, I want to create a uh, new map, and I'll do the place marks example, let's say movie theaters. So I'm going to start off my new custom map. I've already done, you can see I've been working on this, I've got movie theaters, movie theaters too. I'm going to just go ahead and do a search here for movie theaters near Staten Island. This is going to get me zoomed in, and it's also going to highlight with the markers where the, it's where the movie theaters are and now by using my mouse I can roll in and zoom that's the way I like to zoom and you'll be able to see here that these push pins here on the map if I click on that A marker there that's a, that's a movie theater and down at the bottom of that pop-up do you see where it says save to map and this is where you can save it to one of your custom maps I pull that down, it says saves to my maps, which one, then it says which map do you want to save to. And if I pull this list down, these are all the maps I've already been starting to work on, or at the very bottom of that list I can create a new map. All right, so I just created a new map, and there on the left hand pane you can see that it's one item inside this new customized map. Uh, the title of the map is the same as the first entry into the map, so I can go ahead and click on Edit button, and I can change my title here, and I would change it to something like Staten Island Movie Theaters. 
and I already had a test sample one and two, so they'll call this one number three, but normally you're just going to drop that number. You wouldn't use that number on the end. You can put a description in here. Uh, the options as far as sharing public is good because that's the whole point of all this is that you want people to see it. I'll go ahead and, and save that. So that's locked in. If I was done editing all together, I could hit done. Now let's go back to my search again. I'm going to add a second entry. So I'll go back to my, let's do movie theaters near Staten Island. All right. And I'm going to go and zoom in on my point mark B. And the marker changes as I zoom in here. But I, okay, so let's pick on this marker here. Again, I'm looking to pop up. I can save it to a map. And again, it says which one do you want to save to? And you can pick the map that you want to save it to. And so I'm just going to save that pin to my, my new custom map. So at the top of the map here, it says it was saved. I can go ahead and click on the view map option. And now this, this particular map, if I zoom out a little bit, is going to have, see my two custom pins here. So, so now I could keep on adding pins. That's going to keep building my list over on the left. In fact, if I can show you a couple more things about this before we move on, let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, and I'm going to switch my view into a satellite view so I can actually see what's going on here at this location. And you can see there's, there's the movie theater. Uh, over on the left-hand side, I want to highlight this, that if you wanted to edit this map in any, in any way, if you want to change the titles of the, the pins or even to move the pins around, you have to be in editing mode. And once I'm in editing mode, then I can work on this in different ways. Um, says okay so I could I can change the the pin marker if I don't want to use that default one I can I can pick a different kind of icon if the pin needs to be readjusted just slightly I can drag it see the highlight at the, the pop-up says drag and move if you want to move it so I could I can move that a little bit more precise if I want to do that and then when I'm done I just want to make sure all my changes are, are locked in so I'm gonna hit I would hit save if I'm gonna continue editing but if you hit done, it's going to save it and close it out of the editing mode. Right? So those are some different things then with place markers, some things that you can do. Now let me go ahead and I'm going to show you now how to do boundaries. I'm going to switch my, my view mode back to map mode. And let's go, let's do another search just to get me to my target. I'm going to do golf courses near Staten Island. Right. So I want to focus in on the golf course that I show you how, how we can draw a boundary. Now the boundary could be things like I said, school districts, it could be communities, it could be different bounded areas, it could be a zip code that you wanted to highlight, some, some other focal point that you wanted to blog about. Now I'm going to highlight a golf, golf course. I'm going to draw the boundary around the golf course just to give you an idea of the scope. So I'm going to switch from map view to satellite view. And there you can see my golf course coming into view. And what I want to do is to go, I want to create a new map. So I'm, in order to create a boundary, I have to be in an edit mode of the map. So I'm going to click onto my maps. There's a list of all the maps I've been working on. I'm going to choose create a new map. Right? And when I do that, I have to title it. So it's like golf courses. And Staten Island, as if I were going to highlight many, but I'm only going to show you one quickly. And you see these buttons that come up here. If I, there's my place mark. If I, I can draw lines, I can draw lines along roads, or I can draw a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a shape. And then it says click to start adding points. Now the technique that I use and I recommend highly is probably different than what you would think. Normally you would think I'm going to click one, two, three, a bunch, whole bunch of points around in the shape, all my points around. But that's that's a very tedious thing if you want to hit it fairly exact. And you'll see that that gets frustrating very quickly. I'm going to show you a different technique. I like it better. You can do it in whatever way works best for you. My technique is I'm going to click rough points 
just at the main turning points on my map here. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to fine tune it. So I'm clicking around at every point that, say, it major shift happens. And if it, when you're done, you can double click and that closes it off. So you see all those points there then for each of my clicks. And then I have to give it a title. So this happens to be the La Tourette golf course. In the properties here, it's the default is going to be blue. I can click on that. I can change that to any color that I'd like to use, as well as I can change the, the line color, the line width, the opacity, and the opacity of the fill and the opacity of the line. That's a lot of different edits that you can do, but let's say, for instance, I wanted to change the line width. Let's make it a little bit wider, so we'll make it maybe a five pixel, and you'll see Perhaps as we zoom in, that becomes a little bit wider, the fill color and the fill opacity. So let's say I wanted to see through the coloring of the shade a little bit better. So the higher the number, the less you're going to see. So let's put it at 80 just to demonstrate. See, it blocks it out more. But if I put this lower, the opacity is lower, I can see through it better. So let's try different numbers until we get to where we want. I think I'm going to stick with 30. And that still shows me the blue, but I can see through it. So I'm going to accept that. And I'm going to accept that. And as I zoom in here now, you're going to see that at each of my points, each of my line segments there, has an endpoint marker and a midpoint marker. So if I wanted to fine tune this a little bit, I can zoom in and if I zoom in here, okay, so that particular line segment, there's an end on this side, an end on this side and a midpoint. And if I take that midpoint and drag it to a new spot, I just created two new lines from the one. And each of the two new lines has a midpoint. So you can see how you could do this by, by adjusting the endpoints to fix something. Or where you have, like in this case here, I might want to fine tune this a little bit here. I'll drag that endpoint down a little bit tighter. and now I can take this midpoint and I can drag the midpoint and that just created a new line segment. And I can take this new line segment, see I keep on taking these midpoints and I can fill in and create my boundaries that are a little bit more tight to what I want to actually highlight. Right? So I might trace, I might go around the boundary and when, if this were the actual case I'd, I'd go through and probably go through all of those and just kind of tighten it up as I go around my boundary. In this case, that's, that illustrates my point well enough, though, I think, though, so I'm going to hit Done, and that's going to go ahead and lock in that boundary. So now let's switch over to the, the concept of how do we get this into our blog post. So what we have to do is create an embed code. So what I'm going to highlight now is on the top bar here, you see where it says I can print it, I can send it, or I can link it. All right, so I want to link it. And it pops down this window, and it says, here's, here's two options for you. You can either paste a link. Let's say if you wanted to email this to somebody and said, come check out this golf course, you could just grab this link and copy it to your clipboard. And you could, you could paste it into an email message, but I'll just show you what that looks like. If I paste that code there, right, and I go to that, that's going to send this page to them, and that will take them right to what you wanted to show them. So, But just keep in mind, though, that before you create the link, you should zoom in to the level that you want and pan it. You can pan, get get the placement of it just right, and then you would create the link because that's what they're gonna that's gonna highlight that particular point or that zoom factor uh, when they open it. So that's a good thing to to spend time to set it up first. Let's go back to link. Let me zoom. Let me get back out a little bit. I'll go back to link, and the second entry there, down below, is it says paste the HTML to embed it into a website. So if I were to take this and copy it to my clipboard, I could go over, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, but I would paste that into my web page or my blog post, and that way this uh, graphic, this object, this map, would show up in my blog post, and that would be a great thing. That's very helpful to do that. But you'll, if you can see through here into the, the code, it says it's a 425 pixel width. So it's really not all that wide. If we 
think about our blog posts in Active Rain, for instance. Uh, we have about 680 pixels across, roughly. So if I wanted to customize this, I can click on the Customize link just below that. And you'll see here that the map size, you can pick it or you can pick Custom. So if I, if I want to put in a custom width that goes the full width of my blog post, I, and I'll round that down to 680 to make it even, you're going to see there's my little preview as well. And again, now with my preview, I can zoom in, I can pan it, and let's say that's the image that we want to use. So down here in the box below, if I select all, and then I copy, that's my embed code that I can use in my blog post. So I've got that on my clipboard. I'm going to switch back over to Active Rain. And here's an Active Rain blog post that I started up. It's in draft mode, so it's not real, but it's going to let me illustrate the point. So I've got this, this uh, blog post. I'm going to go into edit mode. And if you're going to embed something in a blog post, <clears throat> it could be a YouTube video, very similar. Um, in this case, we're embedding a map. What I like to do is you can type out your text, and then what I like to do is type out something like embed map here, or map embed here. And I see I have a couple of those, so we only want one of those. And then you might that might not be the last thing in the post, so you would have some text after it. But I need to switch over to HTML view. And in Active Rain, the only way that you can do that and have it save your latest changes is to is to go ahead and post it and then come back and edit it. What you want to make sure absolutely is that you your visibility is set to draft mode because you don't want this to go out live until you're actually ready. So you set make sure you set visibility to draft. You post the blog entry. So that locks in all the, the changes that you made. Okay. And and then we're going to go back into edit again. And I'm going to I'm going to switch, you see the tabs at the top. I'm going to switch over to the HTML tab and verify that's what I want to do. And I'm going to find the words that I had typed in. It said map embed here or embed map here, however you want to say it. In HTML, you don't really have to understand this too much. But if you can just think of See, there's these P markers on the outside of that. You can just leave those alone. Just come in into here, highlight and delete, because that's what we're replacing. And then I'm going to paste in my, my code, which is happens to be an iframe. And it's got us all this gibberish here, but you don't have to worry about that. You just have to take those words that you said, I want to embed my map here, replace it with that iframe code, and then we're going to go ahead and post the blog entry. If it all works well here, you're going to see there is my embedded map and there is my customized boundary. And there you have it. That's how you can take a map, you can embed it into your blog post, and you can do all sorts of neat customized things such as place markers and custom boundaries. So, that wasn't too hard, was it? I think hopefully I got, was able to show you a thing or two. And hopefully that, that then is gives you some ideas for what you can do with your blog posts. Well, again, I appreciate you spending time with me today. Hope you learned something new. You can catch up with me on Active Rain. My blog is at activebrain.com slash blogs slash Craig DA. You can catch me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is techzmx. And I'm also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Craig's Classroom. Appreciate you joining me today, and we'll catch you soon. Bye.